Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, what we're gonna be going over is racing in terms of your spec classes, which is limitations of a specific cell count and how we can maximize the amount of power output that we get from our power system. Now before we dive into all of the detail for this video, I wanna talk about a quick story back when I raced 15 years ago, radio control boats. Now with radio control boats, you do have those classes where you have specifications limiting the amount of battery cell counts that you can go to. But not only that, you also have limitations around the boat size that you can use. So instead of it being like a 1 8th or 1 10th or 1 18th scale, similar to what you know for radio control cars, it would be limited in terms of the hull length or boat length that you could use. One of my strategies was to look at that specific hull length maximum and be able to maximize that length in order to benefit out on the oval course. Now why I wanted to do that is because a larger boat looking at one of those waves out on the water, the larger the boat is, the smaller that wave looks to the boat. That's a very complicated way of saying larger boats handle waves better. There's no doubt about it. All it takes is for one wave on the water to send your boat up into the air and you are getting nearly a DNF if you cannot correct yourself and right yourself. And the class that I was racing at that time, this is definitely not something that was possible. Now with that said, because my hull length was maximized and the boat width was also a little bit larger, I was subjecting myself to more drag. So not only did I want to go faster and have tons of power output to make me go fast, I also wanted to be able to overcome the extra drag that I was now going to have in comparison to the people I was competing against. Now the point here that I'm trying to make is that your power system and your application, your radio control vehicle, they both have to be able to complement each other. Throwing a whole bunch of power at a specific radio controlled application is not gonna make you the fastest. Your vehicle, as well as yourself, must be able to handle that kind of power. So now let's get into an example looking at a specific vehicle. So let's say that you are looking at one of your one-tenth scale vehicles. It was something that you ended up bashing around. It's got this motor stuck inside of it to power it. And what you noticed is that you now are able to enter this vehicle into a specific spec class within your local radio controlled race club. Now you got yourself to a point where you can put more power onto that vehicle in order to keep up with the rest of the pack on that radio control course. Or maybe you want to put more power so that you can give yourself an edge you know, advantage compared to the competition. Well, how do you do it? Well, first thing to look at is how do we get more amount of power out of that specific power system? Well, what we're gonna look at is that motor that you have in that vehicle. Let's say that this is the motor that is in your radio controlled application. This one here happens to be a 3650 kV motor. Now that's important because regardless of whether you know what motor is inside your vehicle or there is none and you need to put it in there, you need to know the kV of the motor that you're going to select. There's a lot of different spec classes that can be out there in any sort of radio control vehicle type. So you need to know what kind of RPM that you are gonna run within your motor and that has to be realistic. The next thing to look at is how do we maximize the amount of power output that we can get from our specific motor? Well, if we look at the equation, wattage is equivalent to power and wattage breaks down into voltage times current. If you increase either voltage or current, you can increase the wattage. Now we know because it's a spec class that our voltage is going to be limited. This means that our only option is to take the current and increase it if we want to get more power output from our system. This specific motor that we're holding is 50 millimeters long and has a maximum current output of 80 amps or so. The next question is, how do we go and get more than 80 amps from our setup? Well. We talked about the KV of the motor at 3650. One of the things that we don't want to do is change that significantly. Otherwise, we might be getting outside of the range of gearing options that will work within our radio controlled car or vehicle. But when you looked up your specific motor on the spec sheet, you saw that as you went down in the wind count, the current went up. But the problem is the motor KV is also going up, meaning that you're gonna be spinning too much RPM that your gear train would not be able to handle. 
The next step is to look at what other options do we have? Well, the best thing to do in order to increase the amount of power output is to look at the physical size of motor. If we were to increase the size of the motor and look at the next size up of this specific motor, we're gonna be able to maintain a similar KV. You'll never find the exact KV, or if you do, you're very lucky and you can increase the total amount of current output that we can continuously pull from our brushless motor. If we go and look up the next size motor, that would be 10 millimeters longer. So if this is 50 millimeter, we're now looking at a 60 millimeter can size. That 50 to 60 millimeter jump is gonna get us from 80 amps upwards of 110 amps. Now looking at 110 amps is going to give us much more power output. Now the motor KV, the closest one to the 3650 is only 3800. So it's off by a small amount, but it's not too far out that we would not be able to handle that with changes within our gearing. Now, if we wanted even more power potential out from our motor, we can go from that 10 millimeter increase upwards of 20 millimeters of length increase. If you look at that option, we go from 80 amps upwards of 135 amps. Now that is quite a difference in our power output. If this was a three cell lithium polymer spec class, we would be pushing upwards of over 600 more watts potentially through our power system. That is a significant boost in power output. And all we have done is looked at motors that are longer in size, maintain the same KV so that we're not out of the RPM range that our vehicle is going to accept and we can pull more power output. Remember, the simple way to understand what's going on here is larger motors are able to produce more power. Larger motors have a lot more copper in them, which can also decrease the amount of internal winding resistance. And that is gonna allow more current to be pulled through those low wind count motors. Wind same as a turn, very low turn count motors. Generally, when I was racing those boats, back to that story, I was looking at turn counts that was somewhere around just one turn. And others were looking to push the envelope even further, going down to half turn motors. So some pretty incredible amounts of power potential, but it doesn't just end there. That pretty well covers the motor side of, of things and how we can get more power from our motor by looking at larger sizes of motors. The next thing to consider is the amount of power that we can deliver to that motor. And that comes right from our battery packs. One of the things that you'll also have to look at is if your packs can actually deliver the amount of power that you plan to pull with your brushless motor. This is similar to our previous video that we did where we do talk about maximizing the C rating that you can use. Let's say you got one of the highest C rating packs but you want more power potential out from those battery packs. The next best thing to look at is to go and increase the amount of capacity of those battery packs. Increasing the amount of capacity is gonna allow us to discharge more power to that motor, allowing us to get the maximum amount of power output that we can get. Now, when I raced radio control boats, we also had a cap as to how many milliamp hour we can use within our batteries. And that cap was 10,000 milliamp hour. So what did I do? I maximized it at that 10,000 milliamp hour so that I can make sure that my system, my power system is gonna be fed the most amount of power possible. Not only did I get the most amount of power, but I'm also maintaining reliability by being able to reduce the temperatures of my battery packs, as well as reduce the amount of ripple voltage that my speed control is going to see. These are all things to keep in mind when you're going through this process. You wanna make sure that you don't have a bottleneck within your power system. That bottleneck is going to get hot and could burn up on you. All the same rules apply when you're going and pushing the boundaries and pushing the envelope of these power systems. Make sure that you're checking heat. Make sure that you're also checking ripple voltage within your speed control. You wanna make sure that you're checking heat on all the components within your power system, your motor, your speed control, your battery packs, even the wiring and the connections, anywhere there, all of those areas can get hot, burn up and cause you problems. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.